I'm joined now by the Minister of Power, Energy and Mineral Resources from Bangladesh, His Excellency Dr. Chowdhury. Thank you so much for taking the time. Now, you have a very busy few days here, and I believe a lot of conversations, maybe a few bilateral deals. Tell us a little bit about the great work you're doing with India first. Well, we have uh, quite a number of connectivity with India, both in uh, electricity and gas. And also, um, we are planning to have other connectivity, like uh, you know, internet bandwidth, and then uh, roads, railways. So we are uh, economically, and as a subset of that, uh, energy and power, we are very increasingly getting connected in a wider network with India. Indeed, always interconnectivity with your neighbor, I think, is a very, very good thing. But you also have then maybe trilaterals with some of the other countries too. So you really, in the energy space and the energy policy, you're working very closely with your neighbors. Well, trilateral ones have not been materialized yet, but uh, they, they are in the final stage of discussion. This is one with Nepal, Nepal, Bangladesh, India, and Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, because there's a chicken neck, you know, that has to be crossed. Uh, from Nepal and Bhutan across India to Bangladesh. So I think, you know, um, if we can, we have proposed to invest in Bhutan uh, in a hydroelectric power plant, and we have proposed to buy 500 megawatt of electricity from a company called GMR, Indian company. Uh, they want to sell to us, so we have signed an MOU with them for a 500 megawatt of power, hydropower from Nepal also. Now, of course, energy, I think you might agree, is one of the most important um, elements and the sec most important sector. And also, we heard today in many discussions talking about energy poverty and the need to make sure that there's energy and there's adequate energy for the poor. You're a na main importer of energy, so you have to look at the market. How can you make sure that you're doing what everybody else really wants to do and lift particularly the poor out of energy poverty? Well, I, it's a long story, but let me tell you a short part of it. Uh, ten years ago, Bangladesh, only 45% of people had access to electricity. Now it's more than 90% of people have access to electricity. In a way, we have pulled a miracle. Because our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, she is focused on ordinary folks. All the problems, challenges, where it's energy poverty or malnutrition or mother's health or children's health uh, she sees the problem from below so we start addressing you know ground level problems and then you know take a plunge into it and exactly we did that and we came this long way uh, as I said today we have crossed the hills the mountains have come up now uh, so we have new challenges to like you know as we expand our system we have to find enough primary fuel for electricity so that the import of uh, importation of LNG comes into being and we become exposed to vulnerability of these imported uh, fuel more and more. Uh, there is a limit up to which shocks can be absorbed by the customers. So some of the shock absorber would have to come from government in the form of fiscal support. And that becomes larger and larger if the volatility in the market, international market, so I think we all have to put our heads together and uh, lower the volatility. The greater will be the demand from developing countries and greater will be the income for uh, oil exporting countries. It's a, it's a tough game, but I hope we'll put our heads together and find out. And, and also, uh, in renewable energy, we have done really got a uh, great length. As I said today, we have five million households which are lighted by solar home system. Uh, there is no, if, if you put all the home system globally, there's still less than what we have in Bangladesh. So in, a humble, in our humble way, we're trying to break new grounds. And this is, this is our answer to energy poverty, that we must, it's our social contract. It is mentioned in our constitution. So there is no walking away from that goal. And uh, if one a nation is determined you know, it says, you know, if you are hell-bent on doing something, nature will conspire you to deliver. So we, are, we kind of act on that faith. Well, it's a very, very optimistic focus, and I see your tremendous personal passion in there as well, of course, which is very important. You talk a little bit about the volatility in the oil price, and when you're a major importer, this, of course, 
upsets your plan sometimes because you can't you don't have the stability are you looking closely at what OPEC is doing, looking at the producers in terms of hopefully they can restore much more stability to the market? Well, we are kind of observer from the gallery, if you might say so. So we feel some apprehension when the prices keep going up. Uh, it's anybody's guess what uh, where oil and oil related uh, gas or other associates will go up in price. But generally speaking, in the long haul, you know, I think OPEC has also realized that fossil fuel will gradually be phased out. Um, today, um, not many people discuss that uh, 10 years down the road, very few people, there will be very few cars or fossil fuel. People will not move as much as they do. Uh, officers, they will do offices from home. You will not go, go shopping you know, except for, you know, uh, for the sake of pleasure. So movements will become very limited. And uh, so transportation actually mile will decline in future after picking up. So the whole uh, the nature of consumption of energy will go a, a, a huge change with artificial intelligence and all the rest in there. God knows what is up in the store, but uh, up for surprise, I'm sure. And indeed, it's something I think now also it's brought the world probably closer because many years ago, you know, some people weren't part of this dialogue, but now, as you say, you know, particularly with the internet bringing us all closer, everybody knows what's going on, and everybody must move quickly and must move together. How have you found the last few days here in talking with other ministers, perhaps with some of the international companies? How have you found the discussion here? Well, the discussions are different. When you talk bilateral discussions, these are between countries, so the goals are very different. When you talk to private companies, their goals are very different and let's not assume any altruistic goals from private companies. But governments generally have uh, much more than mere private goods and private benefit in mind. I do have a very interesting and productive discussion. I'll have a few more tomorrow also. So I think this is a very useful uh, opportunity for to network with uh, peers and try to learn what others are, how they are solving their problems and share our experience also and uh, try to make the most out of it. And do you think the International Energy Forum, it has grown in stature over the last few years and, and this, is, this is a very big conference actually here and it's great to have it in India and nearby where it's great to have you here of course. But the work that the International Energy Forum is doing, how important is that for all of you, for everybody in the world? The first we must congratulate them because they brought the uh, uh, demand supply together in the form of actors on the demand side and actors on the supply side. So that's an important platform where we can share experiences or even animosities, you know. You know. So um, at least there is a place where voices can be heard. It is very important and I think um, gradually they are build up some databases also which will help others to uh, learn more about the industry, make better modeling of industry forecasting. And I wish, you know, um, uh, from discussion, uh, IEF could go a little further, you know. Uh, take up some frontier research and development, fund it, you know. A uh, few hundred million dollars would not be a whole lot for uh, countries who are exporting uh, oil. But you can do a tremendous work in research and development, you know. I've been uh, wishing uh, when we'd be uh, cooking with, from sunlight, when mothers and sisters will be merrily cooking, you know, by harnessing sunlight. And I think it is possible. And we are trying to do some research back in Bangladesh. So I wish, you know, there are problems which you, a, a collective mind can very easily solve, you know. There was a, a, a Rice Research Institute set up in Manila with a, maybe $10 million grant from Rockefeller and from Foundation. They did research there and saved tens of millions of lives, brought in green revolution. So where is our brain? Where are your brains, you know, put, putting together and solving the problems of humanity?